everyone? It's your dude, James, coming back to you with another episode of Dude Knits. It's currently Monday, May 9th, uh, 2022. I'm not sure when this will go up. It kind of depends on if I decide to edit <laughs> or not. Uh, but welcome. Welcome back, everyone. I hope you're doing great. I don't know if you can tell from all the, the brightness back here, but it's a beautiful day here in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And so... Um, kind of have a special episode for you guys. Um, most of the episode today is going to be about the 2022 Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, which is my first festival I've ever gone to. So this is going to be a little bit about my experience, my purchases. Woo! Ooh, hold on your seat. So I'll start the episode just by kind of talking about what's new in my life, a little bit on the projects I've done, but the bulk of the episode will be about my experience and what that was like. So for those of you just kind of looking for an update, don't want to hear about Maryland and all that stuff, feel free just to, to watch the beginning. I'm not going to put timestamps in because like I said, editing is still a little futzy. <laughs> I might just use the YouTube editor, which... Um, has some great functionality, but not super specific. And that is Artemis. She knows we've started to record. So in true podcast fashion, she starts to yell at me. To be fair, I was gone for a while, so she's a little bit needy. Um, but she's here. She's doing fine. She's vocal. I have my notes of everything. And so, yeah. How have I been? Good. Very good. Uh, we're getting towards the end of the semester here, so we're my job shifts a little bit in the summer. Um, I do work in the summers. A lot of people have asked me questions, and I kind of laugh and laugh because there's not summer's very short. I don't not nearly enough time for everything we need to get done, and so I do do work in the summer. Um, it's just the schedule changes a little bit for I like the consistency of it in the summer, so. Yeah, that's coming up. Family's doing great. Um, saw them for a couple different events. Um, yeah, we're, we're doing good here. I'm ready for the warm weather. I feel very motivated. Um, it's going to be a little bit harder to work on some blankets and stuff, uh, but I'll just crank the AC and work on the blankets until I get cold, and then I'll turn off the AC and go outside. <laughs> it's nice to have that option. So, yeah, that's how I've been as far as projects are going. Um, I don't have many updates. I do have, let's see, I do have March's Celtic Quilt 4 by Louise O'Neill. Um, I haven't put the border on yet, but I've finished this and May is the last month. Oh, look at that light. It looks so good with the lighting in here right now. May is the last month, and so I still have to do April and May and then start to combine it. Uh, but we're getting there. We're making progress. I've also been working on the building block. I'm not going to show that because I don't have it handy here with me. I'll, you'll get another update. <laughs> um probably in June with where that's at and you'll see a couple squares all at once. So that is what I've spent a lot of time on. The other thing I've spent a lot of time on is my Stephen West painting bricks shawl made out of Katona yarns. So it's it'll fall off the needles if I show it too well. Um, we're getting there. We only have, I think, four more stripes to put in before I start the border. So I'll probably pick this up tonight. Um, I've missed working on it. I did not take it with me. I wanted to make sure there was room for purchases. Oh, isn't that great? It does totally look like a stained glass window. I'm loving it. I love the feel of it. I saw a ton of painting bricks. Um, this past couple days so I can't wait to have my own and did you all see oh I know several of you have but did you see he came out or is going to come out with a painting bricks blanket Stephen West I'm doing it it's gonna happen I don't know when maybe not till the fall 
but I'm gonna do it. I think I'm gonna do it in worsted, and I'm going to um, use a ton of just my acrylic yarn that I kind of have hanging out. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with acrylic yarn. Don't even don't even try to put that on me. There's a place for every type of yarn. Um, I was just was and continue to be given a lot of acrylic yarn by well-intentioned people. Um, I don't need all of it that I have and instead of you know throwing it away or donating it, I'm gonna put it into a Stephen West um, painting bricks blanket because I think that would be great and I would love that use for it and it'll grow really fast that way um, and I feel really good about doing that so that's my plan um, I'll let you know more about it like when I start or, or things like that. So that is most of my updates. I don't really have a ton of other updates. The lucky dip, I do need to draw that winner. I haven't done that yet. Uh, mostly because I've been really focused on this vacation and um, I left right as the new month was starting. So I drew the new month, but I haven't, um, haven't drawn any winners or anything like that and so um, I will have to do that at some point um, I just haven't I haven't done it quite yet so next episode I'll draw that winner let people know what it is the new number is out there for lucky dip so feel free to check out the Ravelry page or my Instagram um, for for more information that's out there um, I did not do any socks for April. I needed a break. Um, I, I just, I needed a break. Um, I'm really excited for May's yarn, and so I might end up just skipping April altogether um, and being entirely okay with that. If you need a break, if you're doing other things, this is not meant to be um, a job. This is not meant to be making your life complicated. It's supposed to be fun. That's the whole point of it. So don't put any pressure on yourself. Please don't take any pressure from me. Um, yeah, if you need to skip or if you want to take more time or revisit stuff, feel free. I'm not going to ever be offended by any of that. So that's where I'm at. Um, I'll pick that up again next month. Um, yeah, so that's the lucky dip. Um, the rest of the episode is pretty much going to be about Maryland sheep and wool. If that's not your thing, if you're not here for that, thank you for stopping by. I appreciate it. I'm glad you could hear from me, and it hasn't been too long. Um, we're going to continue to put episodes up. I'm going to try and find a new, <laughs> a new software to use. Um, I do not have any. I do not have any video from Maryland Sheep and Wool. Um, so I won't be putting that in there. It's, it'll mostly be about me talking about it, and that's because I forgot a little bit to shoot some video. Also, I was with some folks that did not necessarily want to be videoed. We wanted to be there together. That was great, and I met some people, and I went with some people I knew, and it was awesome. It was amazing. Um, they didn't necessarily want to be on camera or anything, and so... Uh, if you follow me on Instagram, you've probably seen some pictures already. Um, there'll be some more pictures and, and things like that. I don't know if I'll get them up on YouTube. So you just have to check out my Instagram for those. Um, but yeah, overall, an amazing experience. We've been planning this for months and months. Um, I This is a busy time of year for my work. And so if I was going to take it off to go on vacation, I needed to let them know. Um, and make sure that was okay and so I started planning this I think seven months ago six months ago uh, I'm pretty sure it was seven and so I got the approval to take the time all of that you know the original trip um, was planned by I can't remember who wanted to go first or anything like that I was all about it I've never been to a fiber festival quick recap of history for anybody that's new I first started knitting uh, like October, November of 2019. Um, and I just was dabbling, just dabbling in it. I don't think there was any rhyme or reason, no, nothing specific. Um, and it really was a very light hobby at that point. 
Uh, I would watch an occasional YouTube video about how to do something, but I wasn't watching podcasters. I wasn't doing any of that. Um, and then the spring of 2020 happened and the pandemic happened and I was spending a lot of time by myself, a lot of time alone. And I started watching more, um, podcasts, more instructional videos, and just had that on in the background to have it be like there was somebody there knitting with me. That was my thing. That's what I did. Um, and so I never had the chance to go to any festivals. I didn't even really go to yarn stores, um, like local yarn shops until later on in 2020. And so it's it's been interesting. Um, and I didn't even know there was a Wisconsin Sheep and Wool, um, which I will be going to, I hope, this year. That's my plan to go to that. Uh, but I've never been to any, any fiber festival. I've been to county fairs and, and things like that. Um, so I was really excited to go. You know, people have been talking about this one before. I've never been. Um, and it was with a group of people that I met through um, a bunch of the different Zoom knittings that I, I participate in. So I typically would go to Zoom knitting that's hosted by um, Around the Table Yarns from Shaker Heights, Ohio. They have several um, like online classes occasionally or knit alongs or, or just social knitting they do. They're a wonderful shop. I love them um, and all the Zooming people. Um, Frivolous and Frugal's Dawn, who I met in person. That's how I found out about that whole podcast on um, Tuesday nights. I try and I try and go to those. And then also the Got Whips podcast by Nikki and Heather. I try and make those on Wednesdays. Um, I've been cutting back the, the length of time I've been in any of those Zooms because for a while I was Zooming almost every single night. And I want to make sure I make time to go to the gym and do other things in my life and, and see my family and things like that. And so I've been slowing down on the zooming a little bit, um, trying to do a more balanced approach. It'll probably take me a while to find my balance with that still. But those are people that I've met in multiple zooms and um, we really wanted to go. We looked at Airbnbs, so that's what we did. We, we rented an Airbnb. We did need to change that location because the rental no longer became available. They helped us find a new one. Um, it all turned out amazing. Um, I think the thing that was great for me is everybody wanted to be there. Um, so there was a lot of positivity, even though the travel arrangements got switched around <laughs> once or twice. Um, that's okay. Life happens. Um, and I love the mentality that the group that I went with did. And I would advocate fiercely for this mentality for any other vacation I go on. And if it's helpful to you all, consider it. Uh, we got together in the very early planning stages and two things that I really, really love that I would love to do again. Um, one is when we rented the Airbnb, the per you usually have one person rented. And we said two things with that. These are the two things. One is that we're not going to reserve the Airbnb, make it official until everybody's paid. That way you're not hunting people down. Nope, you have to pay or we're not renting it. And so everybody paid and the one person that rented it got it. And then also the second thing with that is we had the agreement that if your plans change, if something happens and you can no longer go, um, and again, this is mid pandemic. So we all understand how that can change things. We all had the agreement though. We all knew if your plans change, um, that's okay. No hard feelings on anybody's part. But then it's a donation that you've made for that Airbnb and you, you probably won't get your money back. Part of that has to do with how you reserve those spaces. But the second part is it kind of takes the pressure off everybody. Like if I had to change my plans at the last minute, I would have been okay doing that. Um, and I would have just known, okay, that's what everybody agreed to. Um, when I compare this trip to prior trips I've taken where you're trying to figure out who's paying who, who hasn't paid, who has... Um, and people are switching plans because life, life happens to everybody, you know, even before the pandemic and other things were going on, um, it was very stressful. So those two things, I think, cut the stress level by a ton because no matter what ended up happening, it's just nice to have that in place before you get 
to wherever you're going and everybody's on the same page. And I'll absolutely be using those two things again with any other vacations that I do. This is how we need to plan it. Let's all be up front. Um, and I'm here for it. It was great. It was such a good time. And everybody was so supportive. Yeah, it was wonderful. So we had an Airbnb. Um, it was about 20, 25 minutes away from the festival. Um, I ended up flying to Maryland. I've flown before. That's nothing new. Um, there was a layover um, and then a second flight. So I flew from Wisconsin to Michigan and from Michigan to Maryland, um, which wasn't no real issues. Um, flying is not my favorite thing to do. I'm not, I've been on several airplanes. I'm not afraid of it. The worst part for me is always the landing. I don't mind the takeoff. I don't mind being in the air. It's when you're coming down. <laughs> um, that's the struggle for me. And there actually was some turbulence this time on a couple different, I ended up having four flights, um, two there, two on the way back. There was a couple different times where there was some turbulence, which wasn't great. Uh, but the landing, especially the very last landing was there was high winds, there was other stuff going on, but it was rough. It was not good. I was in the back of the plane um, and the engines were over our window, so you couldn't even see out. So you're just like, are we landing? Are we just descending still? And then when it, it, it got bad. So, but I got there, I got back, it was all good. Um, I did bring some knitting and crochet to work on. I worked on a couple different washcloths, actually. Don't mind me, I've got a lot of stuff. So I made a couple different washcloths. Here's two of them, the only two I have. I made five total. I made three on the way out there and two on the way back. Because I knit one, in, or crocheted one in the airport and then on each plane I was in, I crocheted one. So I actually gave this to one of the friends that I met um, in Maryland. She did all of the driving. She was wonderful and um, she said she really liked them and I was like sure this was just my scrap cotton yarn most of this is sugar and cream kitchen cotton you know I think I, I love it for washcloths actually because I like the rougher uh, for washcloths and if you haven't seen I think I have a tutorial on my YouTube page about how I crochet my favorite washcloth so feel free to check that out it's not too complicated two rows of single crochet one row of double crochet repeat that six times and do um, two rounds of single crochet as a border. And that's my favorite texture. Um, I love the fabric that that makes and it's good. So that really helped with anxiety when I was flying. Um, the first night we were there, um, I asked that if it's possible, if everybody was okay with it, we go in and get some crab. because I've never been to Maryland and they're famous for crabs. And so um, I wanted to go try some crab. So we did. We went to um, Steamers and it, I have no idea what city that was in. I didn't know where I was most of the weekend. I just knew it was a great time. <laughs> uh, we went to Steamers. We had the crab. It was great. Um, they taught you how to um, disassemble it. They gave you the crab mallets, all that stuff. Um, it was a really interesting learning <laughs> experience. I love seafood um, a lot and so I, it was a lot of work. I was covered in, um, what's it called? Old Bay, the spice. I was just covered in, and I was everywhere. I think some of it got in my hair at one point. So it was everywhere. It was great. Um, yeah. And I felt really accomplished at the end of it. Like you have to work for that meal. But when you get done, it's kind of like, I worked for that meal. <laughs> I don't know how true or not that is but it was a lot of work i learned it it was an experience um check out the instagram pictures for the aftermath <laughs> um and it was a ton a ton of fun it was great uh, we got to the hotel uh, and probably my single the single thing i loved the most the, it was wonderful was spending time in the airbnb with the people that i was with um, i didn't ask their permission to share names or anything so I'm not going to do that, but um, spending the time with the people I was with in the mornings when we came back from the different activities, 
um, and just knitting and talking with them. And there's these huge living rooms and we brought all the couches into kind of one area so we all could be by each other. And that's where we would, at the end of the night, stay up late talking as we knit or stitched on quilts or crocheted or whatever we were doing or just sat there. Um, you know, it, that was my favorite part. Um, in the mornings, we'd have coffee. We'd get together, kind of make a rough game plan um, of what we wanted to do that day. And just the community feel of being able to do that in person is amazing because I love Zoom. And it was like being able to do Zoom in person. <laughs> um, it was wonderful. It was great. And then we had the tradition of every night we kind of had show and tell. <laughs> and we called it that. We're like, oh, let's do our show and tell for the day. And each of us, I think every day got something. And so we were all sharing what we had got that day, what we were thinking of. Um, that was my favorite part is being there together. Uh, we cooked most of the meals together. We did different things, but that was my favorite part. Um, it was great to finally meet some people in person because, you know, you see them on a computer screen. You all see me. I'm not standing right now. I'm sitting. So me in person is different than me on the screen. Um, same thing with when I got to meet people in person. I remember thinking, oh, they're really tall and oh, they're a lot shorter <laughs> than I thought they would be or, or things like that. And so that was the single most fun I had was that portion there. We did a lot. We got a lot done, a lot of yarny things. We crammed a ton in there. The first night, we went to a pop-up, a pop-up, what do they call it? Just a pop-up yarn festival. So this was not part of the Maryland Sheep and Wool. I don't even know where this was. This was called Yarn Centric, the 2022 pop-up. And so I have a bag they gave away. One of my friends won tickets. So I know it's probably backwards, or maybe it's not. I can never remember. Um, but yeah, Yarn Centric 2022 pop-up. This was on Friday. Um, it was great. There was a ton of people there. I made several purchases. I had to stop myself from making more. I'm like, there's a whole Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival in the next two days. Like, easy, easy, bud. Um, but it was a lot of fun. It was great. Um, so yeah, just to go through some of that, let's see, I have a list of everything I bought. So I'm going to go through my list. Don't mind me as I dig through different bags, talk amongst yourselves. Um, this is going to make me feel really gluttonous as I go through all these different skeins. So don't mind me as I dig through this is not meant to be a teaser okay here we go so the first thing i purchased was some of this amazing yarn let me just fix the skein here so look at this just look at it nice and close get you with the light up and down Oh, that's beautiful. La Bien -Aimé. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. La Bien -Aimé. Oh, it's gorgeous. It smells great, you guys. Sorry if I'm weird and I'm the only one that smells yarn. I know I'm not because I've seen some of you and some of you definitely smell your yarn. So don't even. It's great. La Bien -Aimé. I've never had any. Oh, it feels. It feels soft. I always try and be like, is it feel soft? Because I expect it to be soft and that's the brand. Or is it actually soft? And it's actually soft. I haven't knit with it. I've never used it, but I'm so excited. And you might be able to pick up a theme in some of my colors this weekend. Maybe. I don't know. There might, might be a little color theme. I have no idea why. Um, one of my friends is like, oh, James. Well, one friend said, everybody has a color palette. The other friend said, you're going to go to a festival and you're going to be inspired by certain colors for that festival. Both of them were correct. So this is La Bien Amaze Merino Super Sock. 75% Merino, 25% Nylon. And the color is Grello. I don't know why it's called Grello. I did no research. I picked the one that, you know, just called out to me. James, pick me, James, pick me. 
Oh, it's beautiful. One of my friends was like, just get two skeins you really like and make a great cowl or something with them. I'm like, this might be a cowl. It might not be. It's probably not going to be a sock. Could be a sock. It's not going to be a sock. We'll see what I do. I don't entirely know. But that was my first purchase for Friday. I loved it. And I got that from Forever Yarn. Um, I'm not going to have all these show notes. So listen, uh, go back to it for the Maryland Sheep and Wool. I'll post the link. If I can find the link to the Yarn Centric pop up, I'll post it there and you can check out the vendors to help you find the links. Uh, but I'm, I want to get this video up. So I'm not going to do what I've done in the past. Um, so yeah. Check that out, Forever Yarn, and that's where I got the Lobby NMA. The next place I went was Molly Girl Yarns, and I felt so bad for them. They, It was raining uh, most of the weekend that I was there. The only day it really didn't rain was when I left Monday morning, early Monday morning, and su Sunday it didn't rain. So Friday for this yarn-centric pop-up, it rained the entire time. So it was all covered, but poor Molly Girl Yarns was um, not on concrete, so they were they put down they did the best they could. They really super tried, but there's no way you're getting away from mud when there's that much water. People are walking through. The, there's no way, and so it was all muddy by them. Um, but that is the second place that I had purchased something, and so I got. I haven't tried a lot of mohairs. Um, Dawn, you're inspiring me. Um, so this is Molly Girl Yarns. This is Motown Yarns by Molly Girl. Molly Girl, let me show you the yarn. Okay, let's get it where you can see the light. Let's get it where you can see the light. There it is. There it goes. Doesn't it look beautiful? Um, yeah, I think it's beautiful. It is lace weight, approximately 455 for yards, 72 kid mohair, 28 silk. And it's just beautiful. It feels so good. I'm thinking that these colors work so well together. Oh, look at them. Would you just look at them? Oh, I'm so excited. No, again, no idea. Um, if I did a cowl, I think it would be great either to have mohair sections or hold it together with that to make the cowl. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll feel inspired. Um, so that's one of the things I got at Molly Girl Yarns. And then I got a whole bunch of minis. I had a really cute mini case. So I'm not going to read all of these minis to you. I will tell you what the different ones are. I got six minis. Um, and so these first three are all 7525. Um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with them. I'm thinking I'm going to make a lot more socks coming up. I purposely got a bunch of sock yarn. And so look at these minis. Just look at them. Yes, 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 yes. Beautiful. 75.25 for those three. And then the next three are all 85.15. Super washed merino and nylon. Okay, here's two of the three. No, I haven't lost any yarn yet. I can hear all of you snickering. Here's these three. Would you just look at them? Aren't they pretty? If they would focus. Here they are. They're beautiful. The reason I got three, it was five for something. I can't remember the exact price. It was five for something, and I was looking through their mini bin that they had set up in plastic bin, again, for the rain, the wet, all that stuff. Um, and I found their square card reader. Um, and so I'm like, hey, are you all looking for this? And you should have seen the two people. They jumped. Like, oh my god, we haven't been able to do any card transactions because they're missing this thing. So when you go to a pop-up, they have to move all of their stuff from, I think they have a physical location, not 100% sure. Um, they have to move all of their stuff to the location, and so they had it all in totes. 
uh, and they must have gotten that tote and I just gave it to them like get a free mini skate on us so they were super nice they were great um, and that is the second place that I went the third place was this cool little trailer so it was a black trailer um, that they had modified and you could go in and I forget the name of it does it tell me on the screen no they had a fun name on their trailer like a mobile yarn shop something like that so you go in and it looks like a legit yarn shop in a stall and so a trailer, a trailer. It was all covered. It was really nice when it was raining in there. And so that was Frog It. Frog is in an amphibian, F-R-O-G, Frog It Yarns, hand dyed in Pennsylvania. I don't think I've tried any of these shops that I'm showing. So this um, is the yarn. Let me show you. Somehow I've got to get the lighting a little bit better. up close if it looks like I'm sweating I'm starting to sweat a little bit I shut the oh you can see it really well there I shut the balcony door because you can hear all the wind which would cool this place down um, but I didn't want the audio to get messed up so it's froggy yarns again this is a super wash 7520 wool nylon um, the colorway is copper pennies which again is just beautiful. That bronze and brown, oh, and the light teal. It's a fingering weight sock yarn and I have intended to make socks with it. So that was Froggit Yarns. Then we have, oh, this place was really cool. Painted Spring, I have the card here. Painted Spring Farm Alpacas. And so this is Beth and Neil from Pennsylvania. You might have to go, if it isn't showing the right way, you might have to go find a mirror. But hey, look, there's your show notes, folks. Um, and it's funny, we have an alpaca farm in Wisconsin called London Dairy Alpaca. And I have gone on a tour there in the past. Check my Instagram. Because um, they did a wine and knitting night. And they you got a, the baby mamas and the, the babies and the mamas. <laughs> alpacas came through as you were knitting and got to interact with you and Beth one of the owners here knows the owner for Wisconsin um, so there I had to get some alpaca yarn my goals for this whole trip try a whole bunch of different types of fibers and stores I've never tried um, I wanted to get some sock yarn uh, because except for my lucky dip I don't have a ton of sock yarn I just I don't um, and that is not a request. I've gotten a ton now. Um, and then I wanted to get a sweater quantity. So this is alpaca. I look at it like, I don't want to show you. I'm enjoying it myself first. That's not what I'm trying to do. Look at that. Just look at this. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm trying to do a close up. That is beautiful. So it was actually sold under the yarn company. I think there might have been a, I don't 100% know. There might have been a group of people that took it to the mill together is a little bit what I've heard. I don't know if that's true. This is hand dyed fingering weight, fingering weight yarn, 20% super fine alpaca, 65% super washed wool, and 15% nylon, 440 yards. Beautiful with the colorway Everglades 655. And there was a great price for this. I think it was $24 for alpaca yarn. And it is it's got a it's a little more fuzzy. I don't know if you can tell. Try to hold it close. Actually, I wonder no, that's not gonna help. It's a little bit fuzzy. Not too bad. And it is very soft. I'm probably going to make socks. Probably going to make socks with this. That was the next thing that I had gotten. Ah, yes. 
then the next place, this is all still on Friday. Um, there's going to be a lot of yarn, folks. The next place I went to is Destination Yarn. Destination Yarn. There you go. And they are, I don't know where they're located. Not near me. Not in Wisconsin. Uh, but check them out online, DestinationYarn.com. Um, their whole thing is different location-based um, colorways, and they have a whole bunch of really cool names. They did a Lord of the Rings line, and they named it after places in Lord of the Rings, and so this is the Shire. If any of you are Lord of the Ring fans, that's where the Hobbits live and are from. Look at that. I thought it was beautiful. Just beautiful. This is 7525 Superwash Merino Nylon, 463 yards and 100 grams. Very soft. I love the colorway. It's just beautiful. Um, and again, it'll probably be socks. I could change my mind at any time. I, I hold myself to no accountability there. Um, that was everything. That it was not everything. I lied. I also had, I don't know where it is though. Might take me a second, folks. The last place I had gone to there was 29 Bridges. 29 Bridges, where are you? Sorry, folks, slight delay in the show because I lost the yarn. I remember exactly what it looks like, too. It's beautiful. It is stunning and gorgeous, and so many other things. that I can't even tell you right now because I have no idea where the yarn went. Oh, that's my idea in the morning. That's fine. Okay, well, when we come back to it, it's 29 bridges um, in their colorway Storm or Amber, and it is assigned color pooling. So it's purposely dyed that way. Um, I will find it. I am sure as I go through the rest of the yarn. So you're going gonna to have to come back to that one. Uh, again, it's just because there's a little too much here. Little yarn piggery. Yarn piggery. I don't know what that accent is or where it came from. It just happened. We're here together in this moment. Um, I kind of look like an angel with this halo in the background. You all can agree with that. Thank you for agreeing. Um, as we move on to Saturday. The last, we did go somewhere else. We also went to Magpie Fibers. Um, I got to check that out in person, which was really cool. Um, yeah, it was really cool. I took a bunch of pictures. I posted them on Instagram. Feel free to take a look at those. What can I say about it? It was a new building. It was a new, I think it was their opening. Maybe not their opening. Um, my friends were with me and they know a lot more famous people than I do. They're like, oh, look at that person. Look at that person. Oh, that's that person's husband. And I'm like, that's great. Um, you know, that was wonderful. I'm going to be honest, though. It was, you go from a pop-up with all those types of yarns to something that's a little more, I don't know. It wasn't quite what I was expecting it to be. It was beautiful yarns. They were great. There was a little bit of a spider incident. Again, new building. I don't know what happened. I went to go pick up a yarn because my friend that was there is making her granddaughter um, a sweater, I think. And it's this very specific shade of yellow. And so I saw it. I'm like, oh, we were just talking about it the Thursday night. So I go to pick it up. 
and I grab the skein and I turn it over and I just <gasps> huge okay not huge but very large spider which I did not appreciate not appreciate at all um so that did freak me out a little bit but it was a cool experience to go there was the bank vault that was there I took a picture with I went into the vault saw all the yarn um maybe it was because it was the end of the day and I had already bought a lot of other yarn um, I didn't really buy anything for myself. I got a gift for a friend there, and, and that was it. So, uh, But it was cool to be there. It was a great experience. I get to say I've been to Mag Magpie Fibers. Um, I don't know if I'll ever get to say that again. Um, the, the shop folks were super nice, really helpful. Um, I was wearing my sweater, and I got several compliments on it. Um, which even if they were just taught to do that as a business model, that's a super smart business model because yes, it does everything. And who, I probably wouldn't have bought anything there if they hadn't done that. I mean, that's a lie. I was going to get that gift anyways. But um, I really liked the shop, shop people. It was cool to be there. Um, and that was my Friday. Oh, you can tell this is not scripted, folks. It's just who I am. Uh, Saturday was the first day of Maryland Sheep and Wool, the actual festival, which is held in um, Maryland in Frederick. I think Frederick is just the town. Uh, and then it's at a fairgrounds. So you have to drive there. You park in the fairgrounds and kind of walk in. There's several barns that are there. Um, the barns are full of livestock. Um, the barns are full of vendors and yarn uh, and there's different competitions. I couldn't even see it all. I would love to go again. There's this sheep to shawl competition where you have teams of people that get together and they shear a sheep and then they spin and weave the wool into a shawl all in one day. Um, so there's a huge pile of wool in the center and there's three um, just like that sp uh, spinning wheels around it and the fourth side of the square was taken up by a loom and they had different themes one of the team's theme was yarn wars and they were all dressed up as star wars inspired characters um there's different judging events that take place there's different um, animal showings and things like that that's my neighbor making some kind of noise outside i apologize um but yeah, it was great, really fun to see all of that. So they had pop-up tents as well. Again, there was some mud. Um, and so it was just, there was a ton, a ton of vendors. Take a look at the link that I posted below that shows all the vendors. Um, just way too many. I did not see all of them. I did not give them all equal time because I just couldn't. I'm a person and can only do so much in a day. And also, every single day that I was there, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, my, my legs, back, and feet hurt so much by the end of the day because you're just walking around on concrete, um, you're out and about a lot more than I'm used to, you know, all that stuff. So it was great. It was really, really good. So the things that I have to show from Thursday, and I know these are not all in order of when I got them. I was pretty good with Fridays. From here on out, they're kind of all over the place. Um, so the first thing, I knew I wanted to learn a little bit more about spinning because I have not yet used that right there. I did, however, purchase a couple spindles, drop spindles, um, and I actually practiced spinning some fibers. So I'll show you that. Uh, but one of the things that I got was actually this ball of roving, just a chunk of roving, it's not a braid. Um, the colors are great. They're this like teal green and orange. This is from The Little Barn and it's a custom color mix, 100% dyed fine wool. It's a non-repeatable color, but you can always check them out. Um, the price was great. It, they gave you 20% off if you pay it in cash. Um, and this is four ounces of fiber, um, which will take me a while to get through. And it was like $7 with a discount. So that was one of the first things that I got. Then one of the next things is we went to um, a store. And it was, I think, the first time they've been there called Shirsty Cat. 
kind of like thirsty and shirt, shirsty cat. Um, they were wonderful. They were a really great store, a pop-up um, that was there. And I got this colorway. This is a braid of um, roving that you can spin up. And so I think I'm going to someday, when I get a little bit better, so I'm going to save this one. Um, I'm not saving the other one. I've already started to use it. Um, but I want to make socks out of this because this is 70% merino, 30% rainbow nylon. And just look at it. This is all roving. So you can spin all of this. And this is what they call a braid. Because I'm a spinner now. Not, you know. Not really, but I like to, to have fun. And so um, this is a braid and it's beautiful and it's great. 70% merino, 30% rainbow nylon. So that is some fiber that I got. Let's see. Then I went to, they had more than just yarn there. They had a whole bunch of different vendors but there was one called Shepherd's Woodworking. And so I got a tumbler. Shepherd's. Oh, why is my light so like this? Probably because it's the outside light and it's changing as the day goes on. Shepherd's Woodworking. Uh, and it says got wood, which I thought was funny. So that is why I bought myself a little tumbler which I will absolutely use in public, but not at work. So that's a tumbler that I got from them. I was tickled pink to get that. Then there was a place called Carrodin Farms. And oh my goodness, this place, yeah, they were wonderful. They, I mean, the yarn I got was 70% alpaca, 30% silk, and a 100% amazing. Um, it is so soft. Look at this. Look at this. Just look at it. It is beautiful. 70 alpaca, 30% silk, and it was like $24. That's it. It's so, it's like freaking air. It's like I'm holding air. There's almost no weight here. It just melts in your fingers. I have no idea what I'm going to do with it. A small project, definitely not socks. Something that I can keep close to my face, probably. Oh, it might be a cowl. I was looking at, I think it was called My Girlfriend's Cowl, was the one they had a sample size, sample, sample with, but it is beautiful. It is 260 yards. I believe it's DK. Um, so 100 grams, 100% 100 beautiful. I just love touching it. I love touching it. But again, some alpaca and silk. They were wonderful. Um, then there was a place called, what was this place called? Oh, so one of my friends that was there is, um, I believe, Swedish. And so I'm not going to say this right, but this is from Yarn Hug, H Y G G E. I there's not an English pure translation to that word, I guess. Um, and so I got some great, um, some great yarn there. So the first thing I got was this hand dyed fingering, eighty percent superwash merino, twenty percent nylon. It's called Sea Oak. So that is Sea Oak. Great price too, $19. And then they had a bunch of mohair for sale. So I got mohair called Peacock. This is 70% kid mohair, 30% silk, and it's 275 yards. And look at that. Just look at it. Now look at them together. Oh, they're like the same colorway. I'm probably going to do a hat holding the mohair with this because I think it'll be super warm. Don't know which one yet. If you have suggestions, feel free. 
Dawn, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Dawn loves mohair. So, oh, that's beautiful. It was so good. I'm so glad I got those together. I wanted them to be the same, similar um, colorway. So, turning my pages. The other thing I got is the one friend who was driving us all around had this amazing lotion in her car that she had gotten at Maryland Sheep and Wool, I think, or the store itself at a different year. Oh, and the scent is Honey Almond. This is from the shop's name. I think the shop's name is My Daughter's Recipe. My Daughter's Recipe. Where is my camera? My Daughter's Recipe. It has a website of therosefield.com. So not entirely sure which one we should go to. But it smells so good, you guys. Almond. Honey Almond. I've really been into this scent pretty much all day. And it contains aloe, coconut oil, sweet almond oil, olive oil, beeswax, and rose seed oil. And it is, I mean, absolutely amazing. It smells so good. So good. And my one friend said she keeps it in her car over winter and then just grabs a little bit and it doesn't 100% freeze. Um, and it's great for kind of keeping your hands. Smelling amazing. Smelling amazing. So that was one of the things that I got. And I only got the two ounce one of it. I might order some more whenever it runs out. We'll see how long it takes to run out. But the funny thing is, before I found that, I was actually in a different um, shop, um, Utopia. Utopia, U-T-O-P-I-A. And they had hand cream. And guess what? Guess what scent it is? It's this pump that makes sure you get all the lotion. I don't know, some special pump that doesn't use air. It um, is honey almond. And this is 3.5 ounces, so I'm like, I already got one thing, honey almond. I don't need the big jars of the other ones. And if it runs out, I might order the large one whenever they run out. Um, but they are phenomenal. The last thing I got was a spindle, a drop spindle. And so this was from Woodchuck Products. Um, they had a whole bunch of different handmade wood items. And so this was a light drop spindle, which I then practiced this on spinning this on a drop spindle which i've never done and i my thought with this is trying to learn to help better understand for that um learning you know drafting learning these spinning terms because i'm a spinner now um and so i got this really cute little spindle and it it's pretty much full of my first ever spun yarn um, which I have heard people keep, and so I'll probably keep that somewhere. It's not at all even. It's not perfect, which I wasn't even close to thinking would happen. But here is my little spindle. Isn't it cute? This is a drop spindle, and that is my yarn. That's my yarn. It's not going to show you the color very well. There it is. There it is, folks. It's thick and thin. It's it's everything that everybody said would happen when you first start spinning, and I'm not hard on myself at all. Um, I've heard spinners actually lose the ability to do this type of yarn, where some of it is thin, some of it's thicker as they get more consistent and build a muscle memory with the drafting process. Um, so this is what I've done. I spent one night doing this and my friends were very entertained watching it. One of them took a video, which I am not posting on YouTube. Um, and I did the park and draft method because um, that just made the most sense. Eventually, I want to get to the point where I spin it and I just drop it and do the drafting. Um, that's going to take some practice. Uh, so this was the first day. Um, it was super fun. It was great. I was exhausted by the time we came back. Um, there was a podcaster meetup on Saturday. 
you know, at one point I just had to sit down in an empty vendor space and like stretch my back because it was so sore from walking around all day Friday and then Saturday, you know, I just, it was a lot for me. And so I, I needed to, to take a break and it was also raining. Um, I do regret not meeting Chevy Rell. Um, I would have loved to meet her. I, I love watching um, her podcast. I love the stuff room. Oh my goodness. So I would have loved to meet her and other people as well, but uh, I just couldn't do it. I didn't have the energy, so I didn't I didn't go to that. That was Saturday. And then Sunday was the last last day and it was wonderful. Um I went several several places on Sunday. One of those places was um, 100 Ravens, and I got this bag. I got this bag. It's, I like it. It's great. Um, the only thing I don't like about it, um, I mean, it's, it's fairly large. It's canvas, which I love. It's black. It's great. Um, the only thing that wasn't the best is they, had, and I had to pin these. My friends helped me pin these shut. There was Velcro. They had a Velcro connector, which to me doesn't make a ton of sense when you're selling yarn and yarn can catch on Velcro. Um, and it did. I actually got a gift for someone and it snagged it a little bit. I'm like, really? I was very not impressed uh, with myself, with myself. Um, but I love the tote. It is great. It's wonderful. And I also got, well, I was there, um, I got some yak. Um, this is called Yaksha, Y-A-K-S-H-A, -S from 100 Ravens. It's 70% merino, 20% yak, and 20% or 10% nylon. Um, and this is what it looks like. It is like black and gray with some deep teals. Um, in it. Trying to find that perfect balance. It's not happening. Nope, that doesn't help either. Oh, that's actually kind of good. That looks off the colors. And it's in a galaxy or a, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away the colorway name so that was what i got at 100 ravens i don't know what i'll do with it i've never had yak before it is very soft i might make socks with it i might do something completely different i don't know we'll see that is one of the first or second things that i got I had decided after my first night of spinning, because the first night I went spinning, don't mind me as I throw stuff everywhere, first night I went spinning was Friday, no, Saturday, Saturday, because I got the spindle on Saturday, so Saturday night I spun, um, I decided to get a bigger spindle that could fit a little bit more, so I went back not to the same spot. I went back to the place I got the tumbler from, Shepherd's Woodworking. I really liked them. They were fun and friendly. And I got um, a larger size spindle, which I've, that's my current work. That is my current work. So we're getting somewhere. We're practicing. This is a lot more consistent with the second one, which makes sense as you're learning. Still doing the park and draft um, method of spinning. And so I'm going to work on that tonight. I might not, but it's a lot heavier comparative. And that means you can get more centrific centrifugal force as you spin this, uh, which, and there's more um, space up top so you can get a bigger thing of yarn in there and so I don't really know what I'm talking about I've just started but I will tell anybody that listens that I am a spinner so 
Yeah, that was from Shepherd's Woodworking. And then one of the people I went with um, went to Bumblebee Acres, and so did I. So this is from Bumblebee Acres Fiber Farm um, in Sasquatch Erin. So this is 100% super wash blue face luster, different type of yarn. Um, and it's Lord of the Rings inspired. It's Gimli, Son of Gloin. Look at that. This nice Aaron weight. And this nice Aaron weight. For some reason, I'm just all about the browns and the grays. Look at that. So this will be a hat. That's what I want to do because that's what my other friend got. And I was basically copying her. And I entered there. They had a giveaway with it that I entered. Um, so yeah, we'll see what happens with that. I can't wait to knit this up. It's very squishy. Um, and it's, you know, Aaron weight. So it's going to go super fast. Yeah, I'm excited. I have off tomorrow. Maybe I'll knit this up. We'll see. I like having options. In case you couldn't tell, I like options. Um, that was Bumblebee Acres. And then... You know, I still haven't found that other stuff, the other skein. I wonder where I put it, because it's entirely my fault that it's not here right now. I have no idea where it is. I got some soap. So there's a bunch of hand soap there. So this is soap. And I don't have their card with me. I don't remember what they were called. Well, yes, I do. It's Foster's Sheep Farm. So this is from Foster's Sheep Farm. And I, I think they might only go to shows. I don't know. I don't think they have a in-store location. You might be able to buy it at other, other shops. But I got three hand soaps. So this is charcoal. Then... The second one is sandalwood. Sandalwood, it's a very floral scent. And the third one is eucalyptus, which is more of a neutral. I've heard good things about it, though. My friend that was there is like, oh, I love eucalyptus. Okay, I'll give it a shot. So I got three handmade hand soaps, which I am excited to use. I don't know which one I'll go first. Maybe the eucalyptus. My hands still smell like honey almond. Oh, it's great. It is great. Great. Then, one of the last things that I got, um, I, I am sorry I can't find that skein. I'll find it as I unpack. I haven't even unpacked you guys, and I'm already recording. So, so take it for what it's worth. I'll find that last skein, and I'll show you on my next episode. So, if I can remember, which I hope I do, um, the last thing, and one of the things I really wanted to get is a sweater quantities of yarn. So my plan is I want to knit the Sawyer. Um, it is a pieced Henley style sweater. Um, I don't remember who it's by, but Sawyer is S-A-W-Y-E-R. The Sawyer sweater. It's a textured pieced Henley, and I think it looks amazing. Can't wait to do it, and I wanted to do it in non-superwash. So that was always my goal, and I kept kick, kicking around flowers. You should have seen us <laughs> in the shop. So this is from Bartlett's Yarn, and all my friends were with me, and they were all giving advice um, or commenting <laughs> in the background about which colors I should pick and all that stuff. I ended up getting 10 skeins, so a sweater quantity for me. This is worsted weight yarn. Um, and it is called Blueberry, I believe. Yep, Blueberry. It's 100% wool. And here it is in all of its glory. In all of its glory. Definitely a sheepy yarn. You can smell the sheep. But I thought it was great. It's kind of got this blue-purple mix to it. Let's see. I can actually maybe cover the entire screen. Does that help you at all if I do that? That's actually really true to color, right there. 
That is perfect. So it's this blue kind of hints of purple. I think it'll look amazing in a sweater. Um, so yeah, I got 10 skeins of that. And now I'm tired. I'm very, very tired. It was a wonderful experience. I'm glad I planned my vacations where I give myself some time before and after. I am not going to work tomorrow, which will be good. I'm going to sleep in my own bed. Um, my apartment is clean because I cleaned it before I left. Um, despite how that looks, that's just pillows. That's all those are. Um, so I cleaned my apartment. I need to unpack. You can see my suitcase there. Um, try and get this video up on YouTube. Uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. It was great. It was wonderful. Um, I would go again. I would love to watch more of the competitions. There was like sock machines there and all this stuff. So yeah, I, I can't wait um, to continue on pack and use some of this yarn. I'm very happy with my decisions and everything and how everything went. It was a phenomenal vacation. Thanks to everybody that encouraged me, everybody that went with me, everybody that gave me suggestions. Um, it was just amazing. Everybody I got to meet. Um, yeah, and everybody that humors me when I don't stop talking about it all the time. I appreciate all of you. You're wonderful people. Um, let me know what you think down below. Um, other things or other fiber festivals you all like to go go to or what you all like to do there, different suggestions for me. Like I said, I'm planning to go to the Wisconsin Sheep and Wool Festival this fall. So um, yeah, feel free to add your comments down below. Thanks for stopping by. I hope you all had a great weekend and you enjoyed the sunshine today. Um, bye everyone. I'll see you later.